So let's get to the actual immediate mode GUI technique. There's a couple of things that we need to keep track of for that mouse position, whether the button is down. We need to catch that over here in mouse motion. Do we really need, do we need those? Just need some break. Just checking if I need the bracer. I don't think I do. Okay, great. When we get some mouse motion, X, Y. We also need mouse button down. Mouse down will be true. Same for up and it'll be false. Actually, I like to indicate that we consume these events. Not strictly necessary for what we're doing today turn false. So now we're keeping track of the mouse position and the mouse button, which we do need for our GUI. And let's get started with the immediate mode. In GUI, mouse X, Y, and down. I'll explain a little bit later why these are mirrored up here. It's not strictly necessary, but it's a separation of concerns that I like to do. This is something we'll be using later. These are the really important things. These are the This is the really important concept in immediate mode. Active is the most important one. Highlight. Each widget, each GUI widget will have a, a unique ID. We need to keep track of which ID is the active one. This, this is all you need. It's all the state that you need for an immediate mode GUI. We also do need a begin. We also need an end. This is where those mirrored variables come into play here because I like to pass along the necessary state for the GUI, which is the mouse position and whether the button is down. I like to pass that along in the, in the begin function so that I don't have to use, you see how I've prefixed these with SDL is because the domain for those things is SDL. I don't wanna use SDL variables in the, in the GUI code. You'll see how it works eventually. X. All of these are initialized here. Highlight is just reset. ID is just reset. X is set to the X we're passed. So is Y and so is down. And do we end? Oh yeah, this, this I'm actually gonna look up to get it right. Okay, we got begin, we've got end. That will happen here. Now we pass X, Y down. End it here. I'm gonna go cheat a little bit. Some of this might not make sense yet. If the mouse button uh, was not down in that frame, then uh, we need to reset the active. And if nothing has become active, but the mouse button is actually down, then we need to deactivate registering active widgets. I'll show you when the actual GUI works, why we, why we do this. And we're actually not very far from being done here. In GUI button, this is, this is where the nice stuff starts. The text, Positions, ID, that one might be, make sense to have here. With 64, 48 for the height. These are pretty square buttons. We need to check if our GUI variables for the mouse button tells us that the mouse is inside of what we've defined our button to be the size of it less than or equal to uh, the X plus the width, same with the height. So when we go through all the events for the frame, we capture the mouse position and whether the mouse button is down and we put them here. And then when it becomes time to draw the UI, we pass along the mouse position or the mouse state to the begin method for our UI. And that's stored in these variables so that Whenever after the begin method, whenever we start drawing widgets here, we can check if the mouse is enclosed within this widget right here. And if it is, then this widget right here will become the highlighted widget. And if no other widget is active and the mouse button is down, then this becomes not just the highlighted one, but also the active widget. And then uh, we're gonna draw the button, and for that, I'm gonna copy paste. 
And I'll go through the code here. First, just defining some variables that are useful further along, which is the center of the button. And also, this is sort of optional, but I'm including this to show how easy it is to have a shadow with your buttons. Here, I just decided that the offset of the shadow is eight pixels in each direction. These are some variables that are changed based on, we checked up here, whether the mouse is inside the button and also whether this is the currently active widget, this button. And we respond to that state by drawing the button differently. So if it's highlighted and active, it means it's pressed when it's active. We offset the button by two pixels so that it looks like you're pressing it down and also change the background color. If the button's only pressed but not highlighted, that happens if you, you click down on a button and you drag outside of it, the button will still show as pressed but not highlighted. If it's only highlighted and not pressed, well, we, want, we want the background color to be this, and if the button is not interactive with it anyway, then we don't want to do anything except set the background color to this. After determining all of these variables and according to the state of the button, it's very simple. We use the fill rect function from earlier. We're just drawing re rectangles here. Use SDL to draw a rectangle first for the shadow using the shadow color and the shadow offsets. And then we draw the rectangle that represents the actual button, which is offset if it's clicked. This function here isn't implemented yet. It's gonna stub it out. We're not, we're not actually going to use that. I might show you how to use text later. Color centered. This one shouldn't return void. So that's just stubbed out. We're not using that at the moment. How you draw the button is you draw the shadow. It's just a rectangle. You draw the actual button. It's just a rectangle. And then you put some text on it. At the moment, we don't put any text, but it's still going to be a button, a very clickable button. Well, and when it comes to clicking, this function right here. This, this this is really what an immediate mode is. It's just a function that when you call it, everything's everything about the widget is handled with just that one function call. And it depends on this state of which is the active uh, widget and it needs to know the mouse position. So after that's been decided and the state of the button, whether it's highlighted, whether it's clicked and it's been drawn, we want to return whether or not the button is clicked. Copy paste that right here. If the button is clicked and the button is highlighted and the mouse, oh, right. So the click of a button, a click and a press isn't the same thing in the code here. Those have two different meanings. Pressed means that the mouse down has occurred. So it's pressed down. But click means that you've clicked down on the widget and the mouse has gone up while the cursor is still within the bounds of the widget. If you click down on a widget and you move your mouse away and you let go, if your mouse cursor is not inside of the button, that's not a click, that just deactivates the button. And that's what this is saying here. If the last active widget was this one and the widget that the mouse cursor is over is this one, but the mouse button is up then like it says here if the button is pressed and the mouse is still over it but the mouse button is up then the user must have clicked the button so we return true actually return true because we've been clicked and we return false otherwise which means we haven't been clicked all right now let's test it let's see button and let's call it test id so now see you can use any scheme of your choosing to keep track of the unique IDs for your widgets. This is a project for tic-tac-toe, so it might make sense to give the buttons an ID that corresponds to their place on the grid. What I like to do is to use this, and it's optional, this is just the way that I do it. I have a variable that's just the only, its only purpose is to be incremented during the drawing of the immediate mode widgets, and then it's reset every time you begin a new frame. The ID that I give looks like this every time. Let's place the button 50-50 and see what happens. Would you like to make it pretty like that? Oh, there it is. With a nice little pretty shadow. And when we mouse over it, look at that. It becomes highlighted. And when we click down, it has a little click offset. That's nice. If we click down and a move the mouse cursor, then it's no longer highlighted, but it's clicked. And when we let go of the, of the mouse button, it goes up, but it hasn't been clicked. Isn't that cool? So even cooler than that is to actually use the click handler 
it's it just it's this is the click handler you just put the the function of the button in an if statement because it, this will this will return true if the button has been clicked not pressed but clicked and what shall we do if the button has been clicked we can change the background color let's do it very very simple it's not going to work very so let's see and yeah it worked oh lovely color Clicking it changes the color like that. Clicking down on it and moving outside and letting go doesn't click. And this is a GUI. This is a graphical user interface. This is a button with, with no text, but still, it's something you can click and you can do anything with it. So for your project, you would just, you know, for the, for the tic-tac-toe project, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is not very great, I guess, but uh, we could also implement a little bit of a, a layout manager here, but for the purpose of the project, this little tic-tac-toe project, uh, this works just fine. Let's get these numbers right. <laughs> oh, because they're because the buttons are 64 wide. I'm not gonna do that. I think the, the concept has been demonstrated here. Uh, these all do the same thing now. Okay, there you go. That's a very easy immediate mode GUI. Let's have a little recap of the code here. Some SDL related stuff to keep track of. We have a separate function for capturing the mouse state and also responding to quit, SDL quit events. All we really need is a fill rec function. All you need to make a GUI and the mouse state. We have a stubbed draw text function here. For the immediate mode GUI, the most important concept is the active ID. You don't need to have highlighting in your widgets. Uh, this is just my way of uh, having a unique ID for every frame or every widget in every frame. It's just an incremented resettable variable. We keep the mouse state separate from the rest of the application, the mouse state that we use in our GUI. We need to have a begin and end function when you're doing immediate mode. It just resets the variables and also handles an edge case. This one, this one right here is actually the one that handles when you click on a button, you drag outside and when you, you see see this is what happens see when i when i click down on this and i drag outside then the others they aren't registered as clicked down even though my mouse button is now down only one widget can be the clicked widget so when one is clicked we need to disallow any other widget to set themselves as the active widget that's what the this magic value of minus one does here it's checked uh, right here. This is uh, what causes that to work. And then other than your begin and end uh, functions, you actually just make functions that are that are the widgets that you want. In, in our case, we made a button. It uh, takes some text, which we're not using at the moment. This is very important that you pass a unique ID. If there are two widgets of the same ID, then they will be drawn as clicked and highlighted at the same time. Uh, when one of them is, is highlighted or moused over, we need to check if the mouse is on the button. <clears throat> if it is, then we make it the highlighted one. We need to check if the mouse button is down. If it is, we make it the active widget. Here are just some code for drawing the button in a little bit of a pretty way with some shadow down here, a click offset when it's clicked or not clicked, different backgrounds depending on its state. This is just where you draw the shadow, which is just pretty. This is where the actual button is drawn. And this is where we have the placeholder stub function for putting text on the button. And this is where the magic happens, whereby we can return the clicked state of the button, which occurs when the mouse button is up and we were the last active ID and the mouse is within our bounds. If, the, if those things are true, then uh, we have been clicked. We can deduce that, that this rectangle here has been clicked. In our main, we're just setting up SDL, a window, a renderer, background color. We're setting up the event loop here with a quit variable to override the loop when we want to quit calling the events calling that a separate function for recording the mouse state this is boilerplate for clearing the frame for the renderer every frame and here's our ui with no layout management at the moment 
like you can't tell it like just position this next button vertically aligned or horizontally or that's not implemented yet anyway but here are all the buttons they do different things when they're clicked and it's just an if statement at the end of all of our widgets we call in GUI end that does some housekeeping for us and then we present the the graphical scene and that's it and you have a graphical UI